Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. On our last showing of this all new, not even out yet DeWalt, we had some questions in the comments like, that seems pretty close in power to this still current DCF899 DeWalt High Torque. And you'd be right. With one more battery that was en route to us today, we click on various battery sizes and types to answer the question, just how much beans can this thing deliver, and how close to DeWalt's biggest current gun is that with this new release. When we got our hands on the new DCF921 Atomic stubby months ago, it put up numbers that was sort of knocking on the door of DeWalt's current but aging mid-torque DCF894, which is, well, sort of embarrassing for the sizes of those two tools. We've not shown that before, so here's what that looks like. Not exactly replacing the 894 here, and we've found that impacts more in the sort of 375, 380, 390 plus range are the ones able to take off most passenger vehicle lug nuts, but still, for the size of that 921, making the 894 look a bit embarrassed. Now with this very welcome new mid-torque from DeWalt, it's doing the same or even more so against the aging high torque, which let's remind ourselves came out in a time where it only had Milwaukee's previous generation high torque to compete with and just barely did that then. Most of its life it's lived in the shadows of the Milwaukee 2767 for anyone that's used both of those models. Let's just be honest for a second. A common request on our last episode was to show how the two mid torques compare. So here's how the new 891 compares to the old 894 if we kept the scaling of the last test we just showed on screen. Pretty silly, right? All right, let's zoom out. Yeah, that's pretty spicy. Possibly the largest jump in advancement from old to newer generation we've seen from any power tool on this channel. Thanks in no small part to their decision to keep the size the same rather than increase power while reducing footprint like TTI tends to do. So today we take the next step in this little series we're showing and seeing how close this new 891 mid-torque can get to the DCF 899 high torque with any battery. We've tested the 899 multiple times from multiple sources and purchased our own and did the testing again, so plenty of data to play with there. We're going in order of battery size, so with the new 1.7 amp hour power stack definitely qualifying for smallest in capacity and in size up first, let's see that. So the power stack was able to bring some pretty nice gains out the hole, but once things were super tight, wasn't able to improve upon the 620 figure, which is already massively up there. Hard to deny the effectiveness with such a small package though, I'm always going to be looking for a bonus points there. Next up is the first edition of 21700 cell sizes in the form of the 4 amp hour compact DeWalt. Let's see it. The 4 amp hour compact mirrors the 5 amp hour 2P configuration 18650 pack, pretty spot on, making the same power in the end as well. This matches all of our testing on the channel so far, 3 to 4 amp hour 1P configured 21700 cell batteries match closest to their 5 amp hour 18650 pack cousins. Brian over at Workshop Addict, as we recently pointed out, is doing a series on watching voltage drop, and by testing DeWalt batteries found a similar thing with the drill as well. Now the power stack all the way through the five amp hour battery 
all dip down in the 14.75 area up to 15.7 at the top. PowerStack actually being the least or having the lowest voltage out of all of these batteries. In this sort of middle group of battery packs, he noticed the biggest drop in voltage with the PowerStack, which once things were really tight and highly loaded, we saw similarly. Though in quick bursts, that PowerStack's discharge rate probably moves the needle quite a bit, we think. Next up in keeping with 21700 cells is a freshly ordered 6 amp hour pack. These we've had a lot of luck with in the past. Two layers of Samsung 30T 21700 cells just seem to be the sweet spot in our testing. Six hundred forty-nine. All right, we're talking some actual high torque flavor of numbers here now. With the right battery, this tool could beat a Harbor Freight earthquake. Last up, and mainly for hilarity's sake, we have the three hundred and ninety dollars Dewalt Flexvolt fifteen amp hour pack. Yes, silly in size and in price. It makes zero sense to be using this thing, but maybe Dewalt's most recent battery enjoys playing with Dewalt's most recent cordless tool. Six hundred and forty-three up on the five amp hour original run for sure, but not enough to surpass the six forty-nine that the six amp hour XR pack made, as well as gains everywhere else on the curve being slightly less. Whether it's because this is chock full of eighteen six fifties or this pack has never really been optimized for discharge current, more like runtime, it just doesn't make the difference, which is sort of a relief. We'd hate to have to put something that looks like this combination at the top of the ranking. So we finally have what we need to compare these tools, high torque versus mid torque, the 891's best performing BCS run, and the 899, same deal, same battery. Pretty close, you might have to agree. 662 over 649, that's just crazy. If you find yourself using the odd battery on one of these versus the other, you might have the new 891 doing stuff the current DeWalt High Torque can't do. It's insanity. At least until the DCF 900 comes out. We wanted to add one more sort of check to our reality before heading to the numbers to verify we're not losing the plot here. Back in the day, we did a lot of big rig lug nut tests with mid torques. The best performer there was a Makita LXT versus a freshly torqued 500 foot pound nut. Let's see that. So 2.27 seconds. Let's see the new DeWalt mid torque do the same, theoretically better, before we ship this off to a winner from the comments in our last episode. One point four seconds. Still hard to believe this thing. If there's another DeWalt battery we'd like to see, given the six amp hour's performance, is probably the Flexvolt nine amp hour, which also uses twenty one seven hundreds. Let's head over to the average power ranking and update this one's score with an even higher figure. So this one goes from 479 to 490 foot-pounds per second across the run, which would start to climb up a few spots on our high torque average power ranking, that's crazy. It's worth highlighting that with DeWalt guns, we see less consistency than usual. How you hold the gun affects the performance. We just try tilting, favoring from 6 o'clock to 12 o'clock, looking for better socket progress. But even then, BCS runs are best of three. It's easy to see a 595 run, for example, like here, when trying our best. 
it's an imperfect science on these ones for sure. Dwell appears to have been a sleeping giant that someone, likely a red someone, just poked too many times because with the release of their DCF 921 Atomic, this new 891, their new Ratchet, which is quite good, and the looming DCF 900 Big Dog, they're headed towards the top of each cordless category in a hurry, at least around these parts. Usually this type of news is tempered with, you know, wait till Milwaukee comes out their new high torque. But this is Milwaukee's newest mid-torque. It just came out like a year ago. If DeWalt continues to be pretty honest about their torque ratings like they have in the past, and their next high torque is supposed to be rated at 1,000 foot-pounds, fastening, spicy stuff ahead. Appreciate you joining us for this one. Click some stuff below to keep YouTube interested. And thanks for watching.